So most of the time, people just don't want to acknowledge that they are in the friend zone. But this particular person here who sent me a message, he doesn't even realize he is in the friend zone. So let's look at the situation and let's see what is my advice for him. So he says, hi, Mr. Graziosi, I wanted to get some advice on a girl I like at work. So I got promoted to work in another department at the law office I worked for at for three years. She started working there six months before I came on board. So when the promotion happened in January, my boss assigned the both of us to sit next to each other. She sits in a cube behind me and we hit it off. During the conversations we've had, I've learned about her family, her goals and aspirations and her faith. I also found out that she had a boyfriend, but to me, I wanted to be there for her as a friend. So da -da, you're basically even positioning yourself as the friend, which is actually odd because literally one sentence before that you say this and we hit it off. So how can you hit something off? It sounds like you're excited about this woman and that you hit it off and things are going so great. But here you are knowing that she has a boyfriend and you're trying to be her friend. You know, you're basically trying to get favors with her and trying to be nice to her so that she likes you. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you're hoping for the boyfriend to break up with her. Who knows? I don't know what you're thinking. But uh, I don't think you want to be a friend because obviously you're sending a message to a dating coach. So he says, but what kind of gets to me is there could be a few days that go by where we don't talk to each other at all. Weird, isn't it? No, that's not weird. You are literally just co-workers and yeah, maybe you are um, friends, but uh, you're not a couple, you're not even dating. So she has no obligation to message you or talk to you all the time. Uh, I mean, heck, I don't talk to my best friends every single day. Uh, even my best friend who I have a accountability partnership with that I, you know, basically talk every day about our goals. I don't talk with him nonstop every single day, aside from that morning meeting where we have our accountability meeting. You know, people have lives and this girl, this woman, she is not your girlfriend. You're not even casually dating. She has a boyfriend. So what do you expect? <laughs> Honestly, why would you expect that that's weird? The fact that you think it's weird is actually weird. So he then says, sometimes I let her initiate contact with me just because I want to play it cool. Yeah, that would be the right approach. I mean, that generally is the right approach. But there's nothing to play cool right here because you're not dating. And uh, I think you have really the wrong expectations. So he then says, of course, I have the syndrome where I want to say all the right things. Some conversations are fluid while others run dry. So yeah, you're trying to please her. And uh, the question is, why are you even trying to please her? Because you are not even dating. She's not even technically available. So what is the point? Why would you please her? Actually, why would you please anyone in the first place? A true king doesn't need to please anyone. Uh, you know, he, he does the right things for all the people in his kingdom, but he doesn't do so because he's afraid that he's going to lose, uh, you know, the people, the citizens of his kingdom. Because a king knows that he's awesome and he, a, king knows, a king knows that he always does the right things. Or even if he doesn't, he corrects his mistakes, right? So a king knows that he is valued. A king doesn't need to prove himself. So are you coming from a place of thinking that you are a king? Or are you coming from a place of nice guy simping and trying to get the affection of a woman by trying to do as many things right as possible? You know, who, get, who cares? <laughs> I mean, you know, if, if you screw up with a woman and face it, we face, uh, we screw up with women all the time it just happens not not every time not every moment every interaction every dating scenario with a woman is going to work out sometimes we screw up but you know what separates winners from the losers is that the winners don't care the winners are just like yeah okay i fucked this up mm, why did i fuck it up you know you maybe you reflect on it 
then you just move on because there are so many women out there on the planet. So there's plenty of options. But it seems like you have a bit of a case of one-itis and you're taking this woman way too serious when she's clearly not even available. So why would you do that when you could have so many other women available? And I don't care that she's working at your office and you know it's cool because you get to talk to a woman at your office because maybe you're shy and you don't know how to talk to women in public and approach new women and make new interactions, new conversations. But that's just something that you have to start to learn and to practice and to get better at. And by hiding in your office and hoping that this woman who is taken magically is going to save you from that challenge that you have to face, it's just not going to happen. All right. So he says, um, also, it seems like I'm the only guy she somewhat consistently talks to. And uh, well, I would ask, how do you know that? Do you think she's going to... Uh, be honest with you and tell you that she's only talking to you. Most people are talking to multiple people. I, uh, you know, when I date, right now I have a girlfriend, but before when I used to date, uh, I dated multiple girls and I also told those girls that I dated multiple girls. There's nothing wrong with it. And most women also don't think there's something wrong with it if they date multiple people because until we are getting to a stage where it's more exclusive or more serious, where there is some commitment towards each other and you have to set some boundaries, what's okay and what's not, you know, you don't owe anyone anything. And so women do the same thing. And so the odds of her not talking to some other people are kind of low. Obviously, she has a boyfriend. Um, but, you know, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is you're saying it seems like I'm the only guy she's somewhat consistently talking to. Uh, you know, you're basically putting yourself on that pedestal and this is what a lot of nice guys do. They uh, actually don't realize that they are uh, doormats, essentially. You know, uh, you're not that special. Nobody of us is special. Even though I always tell people to be kings and we should realize all the value that we hold within ourselves, that doesn't mean that there's not a shit ton of people in the world who have a lot of value. And you are not like this magical unicorn compared to all other men. There are other men that are really great and awesome as well. And they're particularly great because they have their own unique ways of how they approach their life and what makes them special. So, dude, you are not that special and you're not the only guy on the planet that she can find interesting and she's probably talking to other people as well. And so he then says, I found out from her that four months ago, she and her boyfriend mutually broke up. So it sounds like, um, you know, she has a boyfriend, you were trying to go the friend zone route, the friendship route and thinking, OK, I'm going to be nice and maybe, you know, maybe uh, maybe her boyfriend sucks or whatever, uh, because clearly you think that you're that special, I think, from what you're saying. Uh, and you're probably thinking, OK, once they break up, which is inevitable, um, then I'll, I'll make my move. And there's nothing inherently wrong with thinking, OK, I'm a catch and, you know, the king is already a winner. I just have to wait for the right moment. Yeah, sure, that is accurate, right? A lot of guys don't know what they're doing and it's very common that people just break up. But you shouldn't count on the other person to just be a loser and that you're that much better. Who knows what that other man, the boyfriend that she was with, what was he like? He could have been a really great guy and their relationship could have lasted for two, three more years. You know, so by having that mindset of, thinking, okay, it's going to happen really, really soon. She's going to break up really, really soon because that guy probably sucks and I'm so much better. You're basically uh, putting yourself on the clock and you're tuning into that mindset of one-itis of, okay, this is the woman. I'm going to wait for my right moment. And that's not how you should approach it. You should approach it like, okay, this woman is great, man. It's so nice to talk to her. <sighs> really sucks that she's dating someone. Um, and you know, you, you can hang out with her and, and interact with her. Just don't be too, um, dependent on her and, and don't show her that how much you value her because, you know, she's going to notice that and date other women on the side because maybe things can work out with her in the, in the future. You don't know, but it could also work out with another woman in the future. And so you have no idea what is going to happen. Now, you were lucky in this case because the boyfriend broke up four months ago. And so now you're probably thinking, okay, it's my time to move, to shine. 
but that was literally just luck. Yeah, sure, there's a probability people break up, but you know, uh, you don't want to uh, gamble in this way where if you are wrong about your gamble, you basically are in a lot of pain, you're disappointed, and you're not going to be happy. So if you date people on the side and you don't focus so much on the outcome of being with that other woman, then you won't care and you will be happy with either outcomes. So he says, of course, I do my best to be there for her as a friend. I wonder what she thinks of me sometimes. Well, here's your issue. You're literally stating the, the problem. I do my best to be there for her as a friend. So make up your mind. Do you want to be a friend or do you want to be the guy who fucks her? Right? Those are incredibly different things. You know, I have friends, hot friends, very hot friends, or not so hot friends also, um, average looking female friends. And, uh, you know, some of them are really hot. And, you know, if I wouldn't be taken, I would say, yeah, well, uh, you know, I would, I would totally have sex with this girl or date her if I had the chance. Uh, but there's also a lot of friends where I just don't care. You know, I just, no matter how hot they are, I just don't care. I just can't see them that way. We've, we've just been friends and somehow I am not in that mode where I want anything with them sexually. It just I just like the platonic, platonic, <laughs> the platonicness of the relationship. And a lot of women have the same feeling. You know, sometimes women just like the platonic relationship, especially if you're friends, because platonic relationships give us stability. Uh, but the problem is women actually want stability from their rom romantic partners as well. Actually, more than men want it. And so by being the friend, the platonic friend who offers that stability, well, you know, now she can find more stability from another man for dating purposes. So what does she think of you? She probably doesn't think much of you at all. I mean, she just thinks, yeah, you're a nice guy. You're a friend. She's the guy that she can talk to about her problems. She can probably rant to you about things at work when she's pissed at something or whatever, something didn't work out or she's stressed and frustrated. But is she the one that she's going to turn to, to hug you and cuddle you and uh, cuddle and, uh, you know, hold you and, and want to be held in her, in your arms? No, probably not because she probably has someone else for that. Even though she broke up with some guy four months ago, you know, there's probably someone else who's making moves who does not label her as a friend. That's quite important, actually, the label. You know, the, the words that we use, they are very important. So the way how we label ourselves, but also how we label our relationships and our circumstances really reflect on how we behave. So you by, by you labeling this as a friend, a friendship, you're clearly creating that outcome that you don't want, which is friendship and being in the friend zone. And you clearly don't realize that you are in the friend zone. So he's asking, what I'm asking is how should I continue to approach this? Is what I'm doing now okay so far? No, what you've been doing is pretty awful actually. Now don't get me wrong, she's obviously your coworker and you can't avoid being friends friends and, and hanging out and working together and having conversations. But even with coworkers, you know, there's a huge difference between flirting and being sexual and there being something that's more than a platonic relationships or really just being workmates essentially where it's just functional. It's just, you know, it's just how it is, you know, like the same way how any normal coworker is just there because you have to interact with each other that's your job essentially it's part of your job and you don't want to be in that friend zone and in this case we could call it the work zone so clearly you are in the friend zone the work zone where this is not working and she does not care about you right now now she cares about you emotionally on some level as a friend but she would probably never think of you in a sense of seducing her so honestly the only way how you can move this forward is if you try to move it towards something that's more sexual. And so you have to make some dates happen. You have to invite her to something and you have to do it in a way where it doesn't seem needy. It has to seem in a way that it's very confident and you just show her, hey, I want to hang out. And it has to be clear that it's not some of those, you know, um, friendly 
friendly dates or, or friend hangouts like, oh, let's have coffee or let's have lunch. No, it has to be something where it's quite obvious that it could lead to something more where you two ha can have fun together and you know where you can eventually either go to your place or to her place and have some alcohol involved in it most likely because with your situation it's a bit tricky because you're already predisposed in this friend zone essentially and you know so so getting her to open up might be quite hard especially if I'm correct that right now she um, probably doesn't have any romantic feelings for you or, or she doesn't think about it because you haven't made any moves and you started out as friends or co-workers so you kind of have to re-establish what you want and she, you need to signal this to her and women understand this okay so if she likes it she's gonna go for it right and if she's not comfortable with it and she just wants to be co-workers you know she's gonna reject you in subtle ways probably or maybe not so subtle ways so what i would suggest is set up a dinner date or some activity where uh, what i like what kind of dates that i like that really work well is where you first do something where you can have some physical interaction so for example uh, one date that is uh, quite fun where you kind of interact with each other and do things together as a couple is uh, what do you call it uh, yeah wall climbing right so with wall climbing you you have to, your partners you have to help each other out you, you you can catch each other these kind of things you know it's, it's a bit of a fun situation you can banter you know do some activity where it's kind of fun and where you can also maybe you know uh, touch each other and just play have a bit of jokes and humor and not take things so seriously and then you can move on and take it right after that maybe to go to a bar or a restaurant sit outside have some wine have some good alcohol beers and flirt you have to flirt to it okay you have to get out of that zone where you're just having some nice conversations you really have to play with her a little bit okay and and be a little bit sexual and say things that she doesn't expect because right now she just expects friendship so you are in the friend zone right now you don't even realize it and what you've been doing so far hasn't worked so you have to take some action steps to get out of that friend zone and the first step is since obviously she is not taken right now it's been four months since her breakup so she had some time also to reflect on the breakup and is probably ready to date maybe she's already dating uh, maybe she's rebounding who knows and rebounding is not necessarily always a bad thing you know it's an it's opportunity for uh, for you to make a move actually because a lot of people uh, when they're in that rebound zone they want to forget their ex and you know there's nothing wrong with that to be the rebound as long as you know how to move things to the next stage and so you know there's an opportunity there as well so make your move invite her to something some activity some kind of date don't do something boring where you can't eventually go to each other's place and seduce each other all right so um and the fact that you then invite her to something like this and you know maybe you invite her to your place uh, you already suggest these kind of things you can already gauge what she feels and what she's thinking and she's also going to understand that you are trying to take things to a new level because so far everything has been friendship based but if you say hey you know uh, let's hang out why don't we watch a movie or whatever it doesn't matter let's cook something or let's go and do xyz whatever your interests are that that you share that you could do together or like invite her to your place for uh, vr like one of the most hilarious things that I've heard from a friend before is, uh, you know, hey, you want you want to try out VR porn? <laughs> At the joke, you probably shouldn't try this, but it's hilarious, you know, like things that that excite her and, you know, where she knows, oh, he wants me to come to his place. You know, that kind of sends a signal and women understand this kind of signal. So I hope this was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Of course, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And, you know, in the comments, let me know what you think. Do you agree with this take? Do you not agree with this take? What should he be doing?